so this is um, a professional development created by me, of course, on, um, there's two topics I wanna to talk about. They go hand in hand. The first topic is co-planning. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it this way, so sorry. The first topic is co-planning and co-teachers, all right? So, um, last week, I sent out a needs assessment survey and I used this to create this PowerPoint and this professional development. The question was, do you currently co-plan with your assigned co-teacher? And what I found out was that a lot of teachers, they don't necessarily co-plan together, um, be it because of time, be it because of you know situations, however, but this, power, this presentation is about learning how to find time to do some of those things sometimes and just to increase whatever you're doing or to improve the co-teacher relationship. All right, so purpose. The purpose of a co-teacher, all right? So there's some rising trends in special education in ESOL. Uh, the research claims that SPED students are more likely to succeed in classrooms with two teachers. So there's been some data and research that was conducted that says that the kids who need it the most, they actually do better with two teachers, all right? Um, and so that, that creates the inclusion cl classrooms. The inclusion classrooms, as we all know, because we're familiar with this, where we have the two, two teachers, all right? And we'll get into the specific roles of those, those teachers. And it improved, the improvements are academically and socially. Um, we all know that there's a benefit for SPED kids and ESOL kids to be in those inclusion classrooms. All right, so let's talk about identity and role, roles. So for the general ed teacher, um, we like to say that's the content specialist. Now, these roles can be intertwined, they can be combined, but just for general purposes so we get an understanding, content specialist and the accommodation specialist. But that doesn't say that one or the other does only one thing, all right? There has to be a shared responsibility. All right, so as we're all familiar, the co-teaching models all right, and I just, I'm not going to make you share, but I want you to think about uh, which model do you use the most um, and why. Um, we have model number one, one teach, one observe. That's where one teacher is basically teaching or instructing, and the other one is observing. Um, when you say observe, it's, it's kind of like dealing with behavior. Um, not necessarily dealing with instruction, you know, making sure that kids, you know, can answer questions online. Maybe that'll work in this situation. Model two, one teach, one assist. So basically I would teach and I have a co-teacher and she would assist individual students. Um, this is one of the common ones uh, because it's, you know, it takes less planning, less logistics, um, but we kind of want to shy away from that one. Parallel teach, which we all know, all right, that's where we kind of split the classroom. I teach one side or teach groups. You know, we do like flexible grouping, things like that. Station, station teach, alternative teach, and team teach. Honestly, the goal is to use all of these models throughout the year depending on the situation. See, most people, most teachers think that, you know, one teach, one assist, that works. So that's what I'm gonna stick with all the time. However, the goal should be to venture out and to try those different models, even though one may be more successful. But if you never tried the other ones, honestly, you know, they all could work and they all should be implemented throughout the year. All right, so successful co-teaching. 
right. Cold planning, it was my uh, second topic because cold teaching is the topic, but cold planning is one of those things where, you know, you see very little of it. Um, the ones who are doing it, you know, they're usually like the veteran teachers, but most teachers like myself who are, you know, under five years, this is what a struggle because I made this PowerPoint to describe like my struggles so I can research and understand how can I co-plan. So co-plan is the missing key. And when I'm talking about this, you know, I'm talking, I first look at myself first. So that's how I view teaching. Um, most teachers don't co-plan. Of course, a lot of teachers do, and I shouldn't have put most, but that's fine. Um, logistics roles and instruction, instructional effectiveness. So the reason why co-planning is hard is because of a lot of different things. And we'll talk about why it's hard. So one of the things is time management. A lot of teachers don't have the time. The greatest concern is how to find the time to plan. Because when we talk about planning and planning together, we're talking about both teachers sitting down, bringing resources and developing the opener, the work session, the closing, the logistics. That's that that's that's tough in my eyes, but that's what we're going to learn about today how some ways to do that. So the first thing that you can do to improve that is designate a time. So of course you have to designate a time and um, you know your expectation. Uh, come prepared. So the best thing is you know try to find activities and things that you already think you want to do and come bring those into the meeting. And obviously, don't waste time. Make an end time and a starting time and stick to it. All right? These are just helpful things if, you know, if this is one of the weaknesses. So how important is personal space? Now, personal space is important. Um, and I guess I'm looking at this um, through the lens of like a first year teacher. All right. Uh, it's important to have personal space. Teachers get their own room, but with a co-teacher, it's two teachers in the room. So you have to create a personal space, um, but you have to give your co-teacher somewhere to like a desk or a chair. All right, it should never be like just one desk. Now, if there is uh, at least a section for you know your co-teacher. Now, I know some classrooms are smaller, things like that, but as best as we can, all right? And you have to build professional relationship and you have to establish boundaries, all right? Now, planning guide, co-plan with a purpose, all right? Now, if you ever get the time to co-plan, I mean, sit down together, all right, in those scenarios, um, you have to do it with a purpose, all right? I created something, um, it's in the middle, it's called specialized instruction because we all know about opener, work session, and closing. But specialized instruction is a section where you can give the co-teacher free range to do whatever he or she wants. Uh, of course, it has to go with the standard. So it can be like, I do the opener, um, the co-teacher does the specialized instruction, and it could be vocabulary training, it could be remediation, it could be any of those things. Relationship buildings, all right? So we're gonna watch this video and we're going to discuss it. Well, we'll discuss. Can you guys hear that? She respects that I'm an educator. I'm not just somebody who's in there to service some children who have IEPs or 504s. Hi, gentlemen, can we put our markers in the board? I think of her as my right hand, um, and myself being her right hand, the two of us really helping each other through lessons and making sure that we can get to all of the kids. And that's one of the um, key components of the co-teaching is reaching all learners as fast as possible and not letting things go. You need to say there are kids. There, it's not my classroom. Dawn always says our homeroom, our kids. Well, 
we are doing this. And that makes the special educator feel more welcome. What is nonfiction? What oh, is nonfiction? And this is not like I feel like it's a really good model for kids to see their teachers who they look to for a, mo a role model. How are you communicating? Oh, okay, well, they, they're disagreeing with that. How, how are they working that out? So Sharon and I, we actually went to college together. We had a couple of classes together. I think we were together for one semester. And she showed up here at Norwood, and her and I were both like, I know you. <laughs> I saw her in the hallway, and I was actually really nervous. I was like, did she like me in college? Is she gonna give me a kind of recommendation? And then, um, and she was seemed really excited to see me. And from that moment on, we just became friends in the building. And, you know, we can sit down and talk about kids, talk about life. And I think that it does help when you have that relationship with a co-teacher to start off at the basics, understanding where each other come from, understanding each other's lives and what's going on in your life. You know that? All right, All right and we're gonna start right there. So, co-teaching is a relationship and um, I will send out the link for that video if anyone wants to finish it, all right? Um, but it's basically talking about the relationship that you have to build. So, one of the difficult questions is how do you have those difficult conversations with your co-teacher? That's one, another thing that you have to consider. Because sometimes you have to have difficult conversations, um, but you always have to be respectful. And that's all about relationship building because everything is not, you know, always perfect. And that's one thing you have to realize in a co-teaching situation. Yeah. All right. Now, in conclusion, uh, I want you to think about your current lesson format. Okay, and how you do things. And what changes can be made to include both teachers. All right, so whatever changes that is. All right, and some supplementary resources. I'll be sending these out. Um, these are just some good websites, some good um, data points that show, you know, the benefits of a co-teacher and, you know, different strategies you can use and how you can implement the models for co-teaching. All right, and that is all. All right, so I wanna thank you for supporting me. Thank you for, uh, attending this professional development. Uh, if you can't stay on for a second, I'm gonna just end the video.